Well, well I think it's going to be a sweep too, Mel. I, I'm, I'm looking at a sweep or a gentleman's sweep 4-1. We're rolling. We're rolling. Uh, for, I'm going, yeah, I don't think, I, I think everything we've seen from Denver, it, uh, it, there's no inconsistency with the team. They're, they're the opposite of Boston and Miami. No, they're not. But <coughs> I'll tell you what, man. Caleb Martin earned some money last night, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He's going to get a max contract, boy. Hey, Mel, you know what? Uh, let's talk about the MVP last night. I, I think that Caleb Martin should have been the MVP of the Eastern Conference Finals. I, I think Jimmy uh, went into a little funk towards the tail end of that uh, series. I don't know. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> He'll have more time to get that, you know what I'm saying? Jimmy Jimmy had the first couple games that really held him down. The beginning, you know? right? Yeah. Yeah, so you got to give it to Jimmy, I think. Hey, I want to bring a couple things up to you, and then I want you to go off this. All day, the storyline, in the, in the early morning, I caught a little bit, and they weren't talking about Miami. They are just talking about Boston losing. And it's all about Boston today. So I just want to ask you, with the whole Jalen Brown, remember how, like, he really disappointed me this series. Would you give him a max contract, or would you try to trade him and pair somebody else up with Tatum? Nah, I keep him. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I keep him, man. He had a bad game, but he's a young player, and he's a stud, bro. He's a stud. Ah, man, you know, <clears throat> I'm torn on that because I feel like he's a real good athlete and he's a good player, but I don't. I feel like his ceiling. I feel like he doesn't have as much in the in his bag as great players sometimes. I don't know. That's a good question. Let me, uh, I got one. I got one written down right now that I was going to bring it up to you, so I'm glad that you asked me. All right, you want to know what I would do with Jalen Brown if I was the Boston Celtics right now? Let me guess. What? Dame, Dame Lillard. Holy shit. Wow. Guys, you see how fucking good we are? We know what each other's thinking. Mel, how'd you know that? I, I've never told anybody on Earth yet. <laughs> what the fuck? Mel. That's a good guess, Mel. He's the only one that would be able to play with Jalen. I mean, well, uh, with, with Tatum. Check this out, Mel. I looked up. I checked out Damian Lillard's birthday. He's still 32, which I thought he was a little older. He's still 32. He'll be 33 in July, which means, <clears throat> which means 33 this year, 34, 35. In the fourth season from now, he'll be 36. That's kind of like the threshold where I think he could still be Lillard, like Curry. Curry will be 36 next season. <clears throat> like, that's not – like, you could still keep yourself up. Um, I feel – I feel like you trade Jalen Brown, you take a gamble. You trade Brown for Lillard expecting four seasons out of Lillard. If you could get four seasons out of Lillard, you trade you trade Brown for Lillard if, if Portland would do it. I think Portland would do it too because he's young. <clears throat> yeah, they're going to want more than just Jalen Brown, that's for sure. Yeah, but if I'm Boston and I'm on the phone, I'm I'm telling them, look, I'm giving you a 26-year-old superstar. You're giving me a 33-year-old that I'm going to have for three years maybe if we're lucky. I'm giving you a guy for the next nine seasons, ten seasons. So that's got to hold weight too, which might make the trade go down. You never know. Well, I, I think it'd be good, but I think they'd have to <laughs> add a draft pick or maybe Gary Williams or whoever that big little stocky little guy is. Well, here's the thing. Jalen Brown is up for the Supermax, $295 million. Boston's going to have to decide if they're going to give that to him or not. Because if you give Brown and Tatum the Supermax, you're, you're not going to be able to sign anybody in the next couple of years. It's, it's, it's a tough call. <clears throat> hey, you know what? Those bench players on Boston suck. Uh, they're going to need Gallinari. My father's so upset that Gallinari didn't come back. But you know what? On that team... I'd rather have Gallinari than number 12, the plumber, the fat guy. Who's that, number 12? Williams? Yeah. I'd rather have Gallinari than him on the floor. He didn't show me much. Yeah, he didn't show me much, no. <laughs> like, I don't know. Joe Mazzula, he, he didn't show me much. I think you could bring a Doc Rivers in, somebody big time. I'll fire him. Fuck Joe Mazzula. Excuse my French. Fire him if I was <laughs> if I'm yeah, I'm fired. I'm Joe Mazzulla made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even like his, his press conference reaction the way he is. Like, yeah, sourpuss. Yeah, sourpuss. Sourpuss. Jerk. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, I don't like him either. Yeah, he doesn't have the handle. He's not, yeah, he's he's 34 years old. He's a young guy. 
But th this is not the time to fuck around with a 34-year-old kid that's making his bones. Yeah. Boston's ready for titles. Titles or break the team up. Yeah. <clears throat> I would bring Doc Rivers back to Boston. That would be. I would have Doc Rivers on the bat phone. I'd have him back by next week. Yeah, I like Doc Rivers, man. Love Doc Rivers. So... We got the Celtics lost it. They're basically saying, you know what? I'm not buying that the Tatum with the ankle. Anything can happen any time in a game. Miami won that game. I'm not going to take any credit away from the Heat. Well, everybody played great for Miami. Buckets had 30 almost. Yeah. Caleb Martin had 26. Everybody else had 15, 14, 13, 12. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no. Uh, Miami won that game, and I feel like all I heard whenever I checked was Boston losing it. Boston, no, Miami won that game. They played good all the way around. They had Boston beat from the first five minutes of the game and never let up. They never let up. Yeah. And it goes to show you, like, I was trying to figure out who I liked yesterday, and I went. I took Miami. I took Miami game seven, and my, my rationale was, give me the team with the guys with balls, with, with cojones. Like, right. Yes. Yeah, like I went with, I was like, give me the guys with character. I know they're at Boston. They were a seven and a half point underdog yesterday. Did you know that? Yeah, but they won the first two games over there. That don't mean nothing. Yep, yep. So I went with Miami because they showed that they have more heart. You know, uh, Jalen Brown disappointed me. After seeing this, do you think, I don't know, maybe they're just not at that level yet. They're going to break through and win a championship, Boston. What do you think? Big man away from, you know, the whole thing. They, if they were smart, they try to go out there and get DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, because they're not playing. It, like, if you're only going to play Robert Williams 19 minutes, 20 minutes, yeah. you know, I, I sometimes I wonder, like, why aren't they playing Robert Williams more? I don't I don't know. It, yeah, it's a lot. I know, but, but, uh, I think that they should go out and get Ayton. Yeah, I like something like that. There's a lot going on. You know what I love about this? When you look at Miami – you, it makes you believe in the team, the the team, the team game, basketball, team fucking game. It yeah. makes you it makes you realize, oh, we don't have to get scumbag Kyrie in here and fuck up the whole thing to maybe win. No, you're winning with with hard hats, undrafted guys, and you're winning. Denver, uh, Jokic, second round draft pick. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like these these are two teams. You don't have any any uh, jerk offs. If you look at the two teams that are in the finals, they're the two complete teams in that, the NBA. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's no super team in there or, you know, Kyrie getting up with this guy and this Like, uh, You know, it shows you that maybe, maybe that shit ain't going to work all the time. You know, LeBron James made it look very easy. And Kevin Durant with Golden State. <clears throat> but not every pairing is is Kevin Durant going to a 72 and 19 or LeBron James going with a star like a lot of these guys are going to form these teams and they're never going to win watch you'll see that's why i said the, the better teams are there the better whole teams yeah now i would be shocked if Miami comes out and wins any games at Denver first you got the altitude second you're not as good as Denver they got a lot against them right away. I expect Denver to whoop them game one and two. If Miami could get a split, that's a win. And Jokic would, would dominate against the Lakers. And <laughs> so he's going to chew by up. Uh, uh, what's his name up? Hey, remember before the series, Mel, I was saying, well, we're finally going to find out if this Joker is really the MVP two-time, like they say. I was starting to believe some of the haters, the media, say oh, maybe he's not that good. You know, when I saw that series... Number one, he outplayed Anthony Davis. Number two, he was in better shape. He was in better shape. He was in better shape. I couldn't believe it. He had more in the gas tank. Anthony Davis was getting tired before Jokic. Way before. Way before. Yeah, I agree. That's why I say he's going to tear Bam out of Bayou up. Yeah, Joker, I didn't know he like went on this big diet a couple years ago. He lost a lot of weight. He, like, dedicated his life to getting in shape so he never gets tired. And ever since he did that, he's been the MVP every year. He's really – he's an ultra-conditioned athlete. And he's really smart. Yes, very smart. And he's tough. He doesn't take any shit. Yes, yes. I like, I like your old Joker. Yeah. Oh, I like him now. I didn't like him because I couldn't believe that a guy that looked like a lard could play that good. But he, he does. He does. 
He has the best hands I've ever seen. Softest touch I've ever seen, maybe. He's got great hands. He's got great hands. He's smart. He makes the right play every time. Yep, yep. So, so I think that's gonna go quick. Four zero, like you said, maybe. Yeah, minutes. yeah. I'm looking for a four zero sweep or a gentleman sweep. We're, we're, you know, they're minus right now. You have to lay four hundred and ninety dollars to win one hundred if you want Denver in the series. They're, they're making it. They're, they're making it hard for you. Like you got to go with a fucking briefcase to win a hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Ridiculous though. Why would he even do that? <clears throat> because, like, look at it. Look at it. Vegas. They're experts. They know that it's a very tall task to beat Denver. And starting at Denver in the altitude, that series is going to go from four something to six to nine in two games. Because the only way that the odds are going to drop is if Miami steals a game. It's going to be hard. So we'll see. We'll see. When do they expect somebody to go in there? And drop a thousand dollars to win two hundred bucks. Well, like, if I wanted to win a thousand dollars, I would have to go with four thousand nine hundred dollars and put that down, and then I could win a <laughs> thousand. That's ridiculous. Yeah, bro. yeah, that's 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 it's high good, odds. It's only good for the big big ballers, nigga. Yeah. yeah. So I started snooping. I started snooping around, like, oh, how can I give myself a discount? So I looked at Joker MVP, and he's minus three seventy. So they're like fucking with you, you know. Like my luck, Jamal Murray will get it, and I won't get one dollar. Right, right. You know, but a Joker's minus three ninety. So that kind of makes your eyes go away from Denver, and you're like, oh, but Joker, you know, I'll save a hundred dollars. You know, you only have to lay three ninety, three eighty to win a hundred. So they're they're they messing with you now. If you go outside of the box, that's where you could break the bank. Like if we ever took Jamal Murray to be the MVP. Let's say let's say Jamal Murray just went fucking so nuts in the first two or three games that nobody could catch up to him, and they give him the MVP. That's big odds. Like we're gonna go over all that in the game flow yeah, pregame. I don't, think, I don't think none of that's gonna happen because Jimmy Buckets is gonna stick in it. Jimmy plays great defense. He does. He does. I saw Jimmy pressing a little bit offensively, going too far in, getting stuffed. He was going a little too far in. See how smart Jimmy adjusted though. Oh yeah. Seven, where he didn't pump fake. Every shot he took was, was right to the shot. Wow, right up. I did see they that. Know, they know he pump fakes a lot. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. Right he just didn't no hesitate, no pump fake, pull up jumper. Yeah, he did get a little bit of his mojo back towards the end yesterday, Jimmy. Yeah. <clears> when they needed it. Yeah, it'll be all right, like, you know. Yeah. Like, dang, they said it comes down to possessions. If they can keep, you know, the same amount of possessions with Denver, yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Are you going to be down to do the game flow, the, the pregame Thursday? What time you got practice Thursday? Uh, same time. The game uh, one is 8.30. When should we uh, – we might have to talk earlier then after when, a, after work. Yes. <clears throat> All right, or tomorrow we'll go over the same game parlay. We'll do the whole board tomorrow, and then I'll drop it early. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, All right, Mel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this one up, keep it medium length so I can drop it. And then uh, I'll call you back before you go to practice. Hey, yeah, call me. I gotta ask you something about practice. Too. Okay, all right. I'll call you in a minute. All right, bro. all right, Mel. Neighborhood picks, Neighborhood picks baby.